based on magnetic susceptibility and relative magnetic permeability of materials, they are classified into three categories, namely diamagnetic, paramagnetic, and ferromagnetic materials. Now, let us discuss the properties of these materials, starting off with the diamagnetic materials. Dimagnetic materials are the materials that are repelled by magnets. When a bar of dimagnetic material is placed in a non-uniform external magnetic field, it tends to move from a region of strong magnetic field to a weaker magnetic field. We also observe that the magnetic field lines are expelled or repelled by the dimagnetic material and the magnetic field inside the material is reduced. Let us discuss the causes of dimagnetism. We know that the orbiting electrons around the nucleus in an atom are equivalent to the current carrying loops. These electrons possess an orbital magnetic moment. For a dimagnetic material, the resultant magnetic moment of all the electrons in an atom is zero. When the dimagnetic material is placed in an external magnetic field, due to induced current, the movement of the electrons for which the orbital magnetic moment is in the same direction as that of the external magnetic field is slowed down and the orbital magnetic moment of the electron decreases. Likewise, the movement of the electrons for which the orbital magnetic moment is in the opposite direction to that of the external magnetic field is sped up and the orbital magnetic moment of the electron increases. The material then develops a resultant magnetic field in the direction opposite to that of the external magnetic field. Hence, the dimagnetic materials are repelled by the external magnetic field. Although dimagnetism is present in all materials, its effect is very weak in most of them. Some examples of dimagnetic substances are bismuth, copper, lead, silicon, and nitrogen at STP. Magnetic susceptibility of the dimagnetic substances is greater than or equal to minus 1 and less than 0. Relative magnetic permeability of these substances is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. Superconductors exhibit perfect dimagnetism. When a material is cooled below its transition temperature, it becomes a superconductor. In superconducting state, the material behaves as a perfect conductor of electricity and a perfect dimagnetic material. When a material makes a transition from the normal state to the superconducting state, it actively excludes the magnetic field from its interior and hence repel magnets. This is called Messner effect. Maglev trains, or in other words, magnetically levitated superfast trains work on the same principle. Let us discuss about paramagnetic materials. Paramagnetic materials are the materials that are weakly attracted by the magnets. When a bar of paramagnetic material is placed in a non-uniform external magnetic field, it tends to move from a region of weak magnetic field to a stronger magnetic field. The magnetic field lines get concentrated in the paramagnetic material 
and the magnetic field inside the material increases. Now let us discuss about the causes of paramagnetism. In case of paramagnetic material, individual atoms possess a permanent magnetic dipole moment due to the orbiting electrons in the atom. But, due to random thermal motion of the atoms, the net magnetic moment of the material is zero. When a paramagnetic material is placed in an external magnetic field of induction, B0, at low temperatures, the magnetic dipole moment of the individual atoms align in the same direction as of the external magnetic field. Some examples of paramagnetic materials are aluminium, sodium, calcium, etc. Magnetic susceptibility of paramagnetic materials is small and positive. Relative magnetic permeability of these materials is slightly greater than 1. A paramagnetic material placed in an external magnetic field gets weakly magnetized. The magnetization of the paramagnetic material is inversely proportional to its absolute temperature. That is, I is inversely proportional to T. Let this be equation 1. The magnetization is directly proportional to the applied magnetic induction. That is, I is directly proportional to B0. Let this be equation 2. By combining equations 1 and 2, we get I is proportional to B0 by T. This equation can be written as I is equal to C into B0 by T, where C is the proportionality constant. Let this be equation 3. We know that B0 is equal to mu naught h Let this be equation 4. We also know that the ratio of magnetization to magnetic intensity is magnetic susceptibility. That is, chi is equal to I by H. Let this be equation 5. Substituting equation 4 and 5 in equation 3. And on simplification, we get chi is equal to C into mu naught by T. This is known as Curie's law where C is called Curie's constant. Let this be equation 6. Thus, the magnetic susceptibility chi depends on the nature and the temperature of the material. Since the magnetization of a material is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field induction and inversely proportional to its absolute temperature, the magnetization of a material increases up to a certain level by increasing the magnetic field and decreasing the temperature. At this magnetization, all the atomic dipoles are aligned in the same direction of the magnetic field. This value of magnetization is known as saturation value and is represented as Is. Beyond this value, Curie's law is not applicable. Let us now discuss about ferromagnetic materials. Ferromagnetic materials are the materials that are strongly attracted by the magnets. When a bar of ferromagnetic material is placed in a non-uniform external magnetic field. It has a strong tendency to move from a region of weak magnetic field to a stronger magnetic field. And the field lines 
are highly concentrated inside the ferromagnetic material. Let us discuss the causes of ferromagnetism. Similar to the paramagnetic material, the individual atoms in a ferromagnetic material also possess a permanent magnetic dipole moment due to the orbiting electrons. These individual atoms interact with one another and arrange themselves in a common direction over a volume of some millimeters. This volume is called the domain. Each domain contains about 10 to the power 11 atoms and each domain has a net magnetization. The magnetization changes from domain to domain. Thus, the net magnetization of a ferromagnetic material is negligible. When a bar of ferromagnetic material is placed in an external magnetic field of induction B0, the magnetization of the domains orient in the direction of the applied magnetic field. When the external magnetic field is removed, some ferromagnetic materials can retain the magnetization and such materials are called hard ferromagnets or hard magnetic materials. Alnico, steel, ticonal, etc. are the examples of hard ferromagnetic materials. These materials are used to prepare permanent magnets. There are some other materials which can lose its magnetization when the external magnetic field is removed. These materials are called soft ferromagnetic materials and they are used to prepare temporary magnets. Iron, cobalt, nickel, etc. are the examples of soft ferromagnetic materials. The magnetic susceptibility of ferromagnetic materials is positive and very much greater than 1. The relative magnetic permeability of these materials is also positive and very much greater than 1. Now, let us discuss an activity to know the effect of temperature on ferromagnetism. Let us consider an L-shaped wooden stand and fix a strong magnet on top of it. Consider a ferromagnetic material, say, a nickel paper clip tied to a string which is fixed at the base of the wooden stand. Let the paper clip be suspended in air with the help of a magnet as shown. Now, heat the clip with a lighter to increase its temperature. At a particular temperature, the paper clip falls down. That is, at that temperature, the clip transforms from being ferromagnetic to paramagnetic. This transition temperature is known as Curie's temperature. In other words, the temperature of transition from ferromagnetic to paramagnetic is called Curie temperature and is denoted by Tc. The magnetic susceptibility above Curie's temperature which is in the paramagnetic phase, is given as chi is equal to C by T minus Tc. This table lists out Curie's temperature of some ferromagnetic materials. Let us now discuss about hysteresis of a ferromagnetic substance. The relation between the magnetic field induction B and the magnetic intensity or applied magnetic field H is complex and is often non-linear. To understand this, consider an unmagnetized ferromagnetic material in the core of a current carrying solenoid. Let us see the magnetic behavior of the ferromagnetic material through one cycle of magnetization by plotting a graph with H on the x-axis and B on the y-axis. When the current passing through the solenoid increases, the magnetic field in the core of the solenoid, H, also increases. 
As a result, the magnetic field strength B in the ferromagnetic material placed in the solenoid also increases. This is represented by the curve OP in the graph, which shows the alignment and merger of domains and no further enhancement is possible after this. By reducing the current through the solenoid, the applied magnetic field H decreases to zero. When H is equal to zero, the magnetic field strength in the ferromagnetic material B is not equal to zero and this is represented by the curve PQ in the graph. And the value of B at H is equal to zero is called retentivity or remnants. Now increase the current through the solenoid in a direction reversed to that of the previous one. Thus, certain domains in the ferromagnetic material are flipped until the net field inside it stands nullified. This is represented by the curve QR in the graph. This magnitude of applied magnetic field H is known as coercivity. As the current in the reverse direction increases in magnitude, we once again obtain the saturation magnetization in a direction opposite to that of the previous one. This is represented by the curve RS in the graph. Again, decrease the magnitude of current in the reverse direction such that the applied magnetic field H also decreases and becomes zero. But the magnetic field strength in the ferromagnetic material is not zero. This is represented by ST in the graph. Again, decrease the magnitude of current in the reverse direction such that the applied magnetic field H also decreases and becomes zero. But the magnetic field strength in the ferromagnetic material is not zero. This is represented by ST in the graph. And finally, increase the current in the original direction. Then again, the magnetic domains in the ferromagnetic material flipped until the net magnetic field inside it becomes zero. The magnetic field thus increases in the original direction. This is represented by TU in the graph. With any further increase in current through the solenoid, the applied magnetic field in it and the magnetic field strength in the ferromagnetic material increases to its saturation value. This is represented by UP in the graph. We can observe that the curve OP does not retrace itself as the magnetic intensity or applied magnetic field H is reduced. Hence, we can say that for a given value of magnetic intensity H, magnetic field B depends on the previous history of the sample. This phenomenon is called hysteresis.